Well, good morning, church family. Today we are beginning a new sermon series entitled Life Lessons. This series will enable us to take a glimpse of familiar stories throughout the Bible that will help us deal with everyday life situations. Whether you're young or whether you're old, there's a lesson for everyone to learn. So hey, grab your Bible, get your smart device, whatever you need as we get ready to hear the Word of God. I'll be back with you in just a few moments. Let us go before God in prayer this morning. Dear, gracious, and kind, loving God, we come to you just thanking you for all that you have done for us today. God, I ask and I pray, Lord, that you would speak um, to your people's heart, God, that um, God, that you would speak to their heart and they will hear your voice clearly, God, and understand what you're trying to tell them. God, I pray, Lord, for our nation right now. God, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to um, bring upon peace, God, among uh, one another, God. Understanding, God, in order for there to be love, you must be in the midst of it. God, this morning I'm praying and asking God that you would use me to speak clearly what you want to say. God, as I move out the way, God, I pray that you would um, go through, Lord, um, this internet, God, as we um, preach this morning, God, and people will hear um, your voice across their phones and on their iPads, God, wherever they may be watching this, God. And God, that they gain hope this morning, God. God, that they be reassured that you love them and that you care. Father God, right now, I pray as always, as I decrease, I ask God that you would increase. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, and it's only through Jesus' name that we are allowed to pray. And the body of Christ responded by saying, Amen. Well, come on and give God a hand of praise this morning. Hey, this is the day, you know what it is, that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, it's just a blessing to be here again, to be able to share God's word with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. And yes, there is a word from God. So if you have your Bible, would you please turn with me to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 1. And this morning I'll be beginning at verse number 8. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I'll begin at verse 8. This morning, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'll begin at verse 8. You'll find these words are something similar. It says, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him. And he will continue to rescue us. And you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. Again, verse 9 says, in fact, we expect it to die. But as a result, we stop relying on ourselves and learn to rely on God who raises the dead. This morning, just for a few moments, I want to speak from this thought. It's more than you can handle. Tell somebody who's sitting around you this morning, or maybe you can tweet it or text it to someone and let them know it's more than you can handle. You know, there's a myth among Christians today that I often hear that God won't give you more than you can handle. 
Not only have we heard this myth, but all of us have used this phrase to help comfort and strengthen someone who was in need or needed their faith to be strengthened. You know, as comforting as those words may sound, there is nowhere in the Bible where God tells us that he would never give us more than we can handle. In fact, throughout the Bible, when studied, we find that it's just the opposite. In the Bible, if you look closely, you will see that God specializes in putting more on his children than they can handle for a purpose. Some of you confused right there, but just give me a moment this morning. Because as we look at this text this morning, we see a great example of this truth through the life of Paul. Paul was a man who loved God and he showed his love for God through uh, proclaiming the gospel in the world. But Paul, he still faced life's hardships. Yes, brothers and sisters, Paul, he never complained about his situation. But if you notice him, he always was grateful to know that in any situation that God had put him in, he could deliver him out of it all as well. Yes, brothers and sisters, you need to understand this morning that whatever God puts you through, somebody needs to understand this morning, he can bring you out of it. If God has allowed you to go through an affliction, the same God that allowed you to go through the affliction is the same God this morning that can bring you out of your affliction. Speak Lamar this morning. You need to understand this morning that throughout Paul's struggle, he learned that even though he had his afflictions to bear, he knew that even though God put more on him that he can handle, he knew that God used his affliction for a greater purpose in his life. So brothers and sisters, what, what must we learn in understanding that God will put more on us than we can handle? What must we learn this morning to, and understand that why God will allow us to endure suffering and go through afflictions? Well, brothers and sisters, I wanna help you with that troubling question this morning. And I would like to share with you just for a few moments several reasons as we look at this text why God puts more on us than we can handle. Notice here in verse 8 for a moment. One of the reasons that God puts more on us than we can handle is so that we can learn that we have a limited amount of strength. Talk to me somebody. God will put you in situations so that he can show you that you only have a limited amount of strength. Listen to what Paul says here in verse eight. He says, we think you ought to know. In other words, he told the church, I want you to be aware of something that's going on, dear brothers and sisters. He says about the trouble that we went through in the province of Asia. He says we were crushed. And we were overwhelmed by our ability to endure. And he says, we thought we would never live through it. See, I love Paul here because Paul, he was very transparent to the church of Corinth. He didn't sugarcoat his situation by using religious rhetoric, but he kept it real with the church and told the church that he was letting them know that he was facing a situation. He was in a situation in Asia that almost took him out. He says, if there was ever a hopeless situation, Paul says, I was in one. <laughs> Paul says that, 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 that I was dealing with an infliction. He didn't say what the infliction was, but he wanted the church to know that it was beyond his strength to get him out of what he was facing. In other words, Paul was saying he really didn't think they were going to make it. Paul was saying here, you know, no, I've been living this Christian life, but, but, but what I went through, I thought that we were going to die. Brothers and sisters, if you can keep it real this morning, 
God has put you through some stuff. God has put you through some situations that seemed hopeless. He has put you in some situations to the point where you couldn't see how you were going to come out of it. He has put you in some situations where you couldn't understand how you was going to make it through. Somebody talk to me this morning. But what God was showing you, what God was showing me is that he will put you in stuff that seems like it's hopeless. He will put you in situations that looks like you can never come out so that you can understand that it's not your power, but it's his power that can bring you out. Oh yeah, God will put more on you than you can handle to show you that your connections can't get you out of your situation. Yes, brothers and sisters, you need to understand that God will put more on you than you can handle so that you can see that your money can't buy you out of your situation. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, God will put more on you than you can handle so you can understand that your education can't get you out of some things that God has put you through. God said, I put more on you so you can know that your strength is limited. Uh, Preacher, how, 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 how can you handle hopeless situations knowing that God has placed you there? You know, I can't understand, preacher, that you telling me this morning that, that God will place me in, 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 in a position knowing I can't handle it. Why does God do it? Because God is trying to show you something this morning. He's trying to teach you something this morning. He's telling you stop relying on self and put your trust in him. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 and 10, it says, be strong, not in yourself. The Bible doesn't say that. It says, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Stop working on your strength. You run out of strength. You, you, you run out of um, uh, 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 strength that can get you through. You, you don't have enough strength that can enable you to push through. You need the strength of God this morning. Preach, boy. Psalm 28 and 7, it tells us that the Lord is my strength and my shield. He says, I will trust in him with all my heart and he helps me and my heart is filled with joy and I burst out in song of thanksgiving. The psalmist knew that in a time of trouble that he can call on the Lord and his strength can pick him up when he has no more strength. That's how Paul that's how Paul was able to sit in the jail cell and he can say, I can do all things <laughs> through Christ that strengthens me because he, he knew that it was God's strength that gave him the ability to continue to push forward and make it through whatever God had put him in. Yes, God will put more on you than you can handle. Uh, we must learn that God puts more on us to show us that our strength it's limited. You, you've been trying to work it out yourself. You've been trying to take the kinks out yourself. You've been trying to move things yourself. And God says you're going to get tired at some point and you're going to realize that you don't have enough strength to move mountains. But with me, all things are possible. Paul, Paul, Paul told the church, he said, look, look, I, I, I want to be real with you. Uh, the ministry, it's, it's a good ministry, it's a good work. But he says, I've had some times where I've been crushed. There have been some times where I've been overwhelmed. And I saw when I, I got overwhelmed that I didn't have the ability to endure. Uh, he, says, I, he says, I even thought we was going to have to give up and we were going to die. Paul had been through some shipwrecks. Paul had been um, going through and he went through some lashings. Paul had deal with a lot of stuff that cost him his life and he could have died. But Paul learned that when he was overwhelmed beyond his ability, he knew that he could live through it because God's power and God's strength is what made him get through it. Yes, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you can push through it this morning, not by your own might. I'm telling you, you can work through it this morning, not by your own strength. I'm letting you know that God will put more on you than you can handle. Stop crying and trust God that he will give you the strength you need and understand that when God puts more on you than you can handle, he's showing you that you must understand that your strength is limited. 
And so, so why does God put more on us than we can handle? It's because he's trying to teach you. He wants you to learn that your strength is limited. Another reason why God puts more on us than we can handle is that he wants us to learn to put our hope in him. God wants us to understand this morning that he will put more on you than you can handle so you can learn how to put your hope in him. Listen to what Paul says here in verse 9 through 10. He says, in fact, check it out. He says, we expect it to die. That sounds like a hopeless situation. He says, but as a result, <laughs> he says, we stop relying on ourselves. And watch this. He said, and we learn to rely on God. Paul here is teaching me something right here because he's saying that, in fact, when I was about to die, I learned something about my situation. Paul realized that the trial itself was beneficial for them. The severity of their afflictions, it forced them to rely on God. It made them humble. It made them seek God's help. Paul says, I thank God that I was in the situation that I was in because that situation, it made me stop relying on myself and it's made me start to rely on God. He says, I, I, I started to rely on God. I learned to rely on God because uh, Paul knew that this was the same God who was raised from the dead and who can raise people from the dead. And he understood that if God could raise people from the dead, if he had the power to speak to a dead situation, then he had the power to speak to your dead situation. Talk to me, somebody. I, I heard someone once say, that, that you won't discover that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. See, see, some of you haven't gotten to the point where you have been bankrupt in understanding that you have used all that you have had and you need to understand that God is all that you need. You need to work it out in your, in your, in your, in your life and understand that when you understand that God is all you have, that's where God wants you. That's where God can start to grow you. That's when the potter um, can put you in his hand and he can mold you and he can, he can and help you learn and understand that you have to stop relying on yourself and you must rely on God. Yes, brothers and sisters, sometimes God helps us to reach the point of total dependency on him by putting more on us than we can handle. He may do this by allowing us to experience trials that are so difficult that we can't come face to face with knowledge that we are completely inadequate to handle it and turn to God out of desperation. So, yes, 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 yes. God will put us in some 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 impossible situations to teach us to put our hope in him. Yes, God will put more on you than you can. Yes, God has put more on you than you can handle because he wants you to learn to put your hope and your total trust in him. God will use your difficult situation to teach you to put your hope in him. Paul says, he says, he says that I learned something. I, I learned to rely on God who raises the dead. And he says he also learned something else. He said he did rescue us. Paul was a witness. Paul, Paul witnessed God rescuing them out of their dead situations. Paul witnessed God rescuing them out of a, an impossible situation. And he says not only did he do it once, talk to me somebody, but he'll do it again. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said right here in verse 10. He said and he did rescue us from a mortal danger and he will rescue us again. You, you need to understand that this morning. You need to know that if God did it before, I heard a songwriter say he'll do it again. 
and when you start to understand the rhythm of how God works, you will understand that if God did it in the past, he the same God that can do it in the future. Hallelujah. You need to understand that if God can move in your life and turn around situations this morning, that he can do it again. And if he doesn't do it all of a sudden, God is trying to teach you to take your hands off of it. Yes, brothers and sisters, Paul, he says in, in verse 10, he goes on and say, we have placed our confidence. There it is. He says, the reality of it is that through my trials, the reality of it, because God has put more on me than I can bear, I learned to rely on God. And I saw and I've seen how God moves and how he continues to move and continue to save us. And he says, because of that, the results of my life is I placed my confidence in him and he continues to rescue us. The psalmist said in 33 and 20, he says, we put our hope in the Lord. Why? Because he says he is our help and he is our shield. He says in him, our hearts rejoice for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, God, for our hope is in you alone. What have you been putting your hope in this morning? What have you been putting your hope in while facing a hopeless situation this morning? What have you been hoping? Have you been hoping in, in, in people? Have you been putting your hope in your job? God says you need to understand this morning that I am in complete control. And that I'm the only one you can trust to bring you out of that hopeless situation. Why does God put more on us than we can bear? It's because he's trying to teach us that we, we have a limited strength. But he also, he's trying to teach us that we must put our hope in him. But the final reason that God puts more on us than we can bear is so that we can learn the effectiveness of prayer. Look what, look what happens here in verse 11. I want you to see this. Paul ends by saying, and you are helping us. How? By praying for us. He says, then many people, the results of praying for us, here it is, will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. Yes, brothers and sisters, one of the most important lessons that we get in this passage is that we can help one another, not by telling them that God won't give them more than they can handle. <laughs> But we can help one another today who's hurting, who's going through pain by letting them know that you are praying for them. Brother, don't feel sorry for me. I need you to pray for me. I need for you to help me by going to God in prayer because when you give God, uh, when you go to God in prayer, you will understand that when he brings me out, you will give him thanks and you will give him glory for all that he's done. God is still in the business of answering prayers. <laughs> God, he wants us to have compassion for our brothers and sisters who are struggling. He has called us to pray and use the truth of God's word to comfort believers with the promises of God and remind them of the ultimate comfort he gives to his children. Paul says, you want to do something for me? He says, continue to pray because as you pray, God is moving. I'm talking to somebody here this morning. You need to be praying. You need to be praying for your mother. You need to be praying for your father. You need to be praying for your brother. You need to be praying for one of your church members. You need to be praying because when you pray, God moves. And when God moves, God gets the glory. I'm speaking to somebody here this morning. Why? Why? Why does God put more on us? than we can handle. He puts more on us than we can handle so that we can learn that we have limited strength. He, he puts more on us than we can handle because he wants us to learn 
that we have to totally put our hope and our trust in him. But he puts more on us than we can handle because he wants us to learn the effectiveness of prayer, the communication that's effective with God. Paul had been through a lot in his life. He had people who turned their back on him. He had people who lied on him. He had people who put him in situations not knowing that God had allowed him to be in those situations. But Paul never looked at his situation as something negative. Even the thorn that was in his side, Paul said he asked God to take it away from him. But he understood that God left it there for a purpose. And maybe you need to hear it this morning. The reason why God has put more on you than you can handle this morning, because it's for a greater purpose purpose. Instead of crying and staying up all night, ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this? And so we see that God will give us more than we can handle. He gives us more than we can handle so that we can learn the, that our strength is limited. He gives us more than we can handle so that we can learn how to put our faith and our hope in him. He gives us more than we can handle so we can see and others can see the effectiveness of our prayers. You know, as I end, I believe Paul remembered what the psalmist said when writing this passage. The psalmist said in Psalm 34 and 19, and many of you know it, many are afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he rescues them from them all. Listen, I want to leave you with this encouraging word and understanding why God puts more on you than you can handle. It's so that you can be strengthened in the Lord. It's so that you can understand that God is doing a greater work on the inside of you. God is growing you. He's maturing you. He's trying to get you to the place where you take your hands off of stuff and you put your trust totally in him. So when next time somebody tell you that God won't give you more than you can handle, you let them know I'm glad God gives me more than I can handle. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. you enjoyed the message this morning and something has been said or done that has touched your heart that makes you want to grow more in God's word if you have not given your life to Christ today is a great day to do so all you have to do is repeat this prayer after me say Lord I am a sinner I am in need of a savior come into my life so that I may follow you I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and that he died on the cross and he has risen from the dead. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, then you are now saved. I want to encourage you to find yourself a local church home. If you don't have one, I want to invite you to Mount Gillian Baptist Church where we will make sure that you learn and grow in the Word of God. Hey, I would like to continue to thank everyone who has been giving through our text to give. If you would like to continue to give to this broadcasting ministry, all you have to do is text the word GIVE to 225-224-7556. Mount Gillingham has a new app. So if you can, please go and download the app under Android or Apple, where you can give, we can stay connected with you through devotional, as well as other events that are going on here at Mount Gillingham. Hey, if you know someone who would like to be connected to this broadcasting ministry, all they have to do is text the word LINK to 225-224-7556. 
As always, I want to remind you that Mount Gilligan Baptist Church is a place where we love God and others. We connect with the lost. But one thing for sure, we want you to grow in the Word of God. This is a place where everybody is somebody.